So I've been talking to Kevin Anderson, who's a professor of energy and climate change at Manchester and Uppsala Universities, about the importance of climate change and whether it's been slipping down the agenda and why that might be. And he's given me very clear reasons why it is and what should be done about it. We then moved on to whether we could ourselves could make some kind of personal contribution and indeed he confirmed it was very important that we did, particularly high emitting individuals like ourselves. Thirdly, we all know that the real polluting areas of the economy tend to be power generation. And so I spoke to Kevin about what kind of pathway we need to discover to produce a much lower carbon moving to a zero carbon power structure. Does that involve solar, wind or even nuclear? The first thing to bear in mind that electricity is only 20% of the yeah. energy we consume. So the first yeah. thing you have to do is expand the grid. Three things I think you need to, to do. The first one is you need to be, um, the, particularly the wealth our society has to significantly change how much energy they consume. And that will mean in the, in the short to medium term changes in the, how they live their lives. The other one is about energy efficiency, of energy efficient appliances. And this needs to be driven by very stringent standards from government. And th these need to be a bit like the top runner program in Japan, where they, you, know, the, you have to meet the, pretty much the best that's available and it will be tightened year after year with a clear market signal. And you can dr really rapidly drive down emissions by doing that. You have to have some policies in there to deal with the rebound effect because people have spent any money they save back on more carbon activity, carbon um, uh, emitting activity. And then the third one is what do you do with the energy system? There you need to first you need to see a significant increase in electrification. I would say about probably something like 80% of our energy consumption needs to be electric rather than 20%. And to do that, I mean this would, this would occur over two to three decades, three decades being absolute tops really, more like two decades you'd have to do this. And that would mean rapidly moving away from the fossil fuels. So that means um, literally like a Marshall style reconstruction of the energy system. So like the, you know, like the reconstruction after the Second World War, it would be that sort of scale of um, engineering challenge. And you'd be moving to renewables, arguably to nuclear, which is very low carbon, but comes with a whole suite of other issues. But it would depend on which nation you're in and which, which of these. Well, which the UK, policies. say, a very rough. Well, the UK would have to go, I would say initially we try to go renewable in the UK because we have such a huge renewable potential. I've made this, this, had this argument with quite a few Wind. people in the nuclear industry. Well, tidal, I mean, why not build this? Why have we not built the Seven Barrage? It has huge sustainability implications, which we can mitigate a little bit. Um, so you want to see. Swansea Bay go ahead. Yeah, but that's very small. I mean, the seven barrage would be equivalent to, well, probably about three, three gigawatts. And if you went further out, it might be a little bit more. But we'll have large sustainability implications. These are not, the things we have to do now are not necessarily good from a sustainability perspective. But if we don't do them, then we're going to really suffer from the impacts of climate change. It would be much worse from a sustainability perspective. So just the, climate change and sustainability used to be aligned. But because we've chosen to fail for 20 odd years, the things we need to do now and the rapidity with which you need to do them means that there will be some conflict between some sustainability goals and some climate change goals. Yeah. And there's a priority in that. We have to deal with climate change ones quicker because the, te the temperature increase is just down the road if we don't. Okay, two last questions. What, what, so what is going to wake everybody up to, to the enormity of this, you know, the, bring in the urgency to the debate? Well, first thing is I don't think we will be woken up. I think we're going to fail. I, I think it's a 95% chance we'll fail. And we will, it won't be quite sleepwalking because we know we're doing it. It's like a little doze in the morning when you've woken up. You know you're awake and you're a bit dozy. And well, that's how we're doing That's how we're working with climate change. So we're, we're, we're knowingly sort of meandering into a failed future. So I think we're going to fail. But there's a very small chance we, we will succeed. And I think that chance we will succeed will initially come from openness and honesty about the challenge that we actually face. If we're not prepared to accept the challenge we're prepared to face, the answers we come up with are not appropriate. And of course, everything we've come up so far has been not appropriate. We're falling short all the time. And we, and we spin a lovely story that you know, Britain's emissions are coming down. Well, they're only coming down because we've had the banking crisis, not coming down through judicious climate change policies. And from a consumption-based um, perspective, they've hardly changed at all. So, and of course, we don't include the aviation and shipping in those emissions either. Um, so at every level, we're, we're running a scale. And, and uh, another runway at Heathrow? Well, runway at Heathrow, shale gas, these are completely incompatible with Paris. And yet, no doubt, some academics will say they will fit, and they'll fit because they'll have some mythical view of some rose-tinted engineering future that they think is going to be put in place. 
And finally, I was interested, I mean, you said you came out of the oil industry. Yes. Yeah, but yeah. when you hear sort of um, Ben Van Burden, the chief executive of Shell, yeah. you know, we're getting out of tar sands, we really got out of the Arctic. Hey, you know, we really are on the sort of, we're, we're, we're they were, the they were, they, guys. Well, they're on the three to four, let, let's put them in, they're on the three to four spectrum, not the five to six spectrum. Though I personally prefer Exxon to, to the BPs and Shells, because the Exxon are a wolf in wolf's clothing, and BP and Shell are, are, are a wolf in sheep's clothing. They love gas. Now they, they, their new profit margins are going to be gas. This apparently so green really fuel. Now, Shell. Well, Shell. Yeah. So they extol the virtues of this green fuel, of which 75% of the mass of gas is carbon. And when you burn it, you get a lot of carbon dioxide. And there's also the risks of also, you know, methane and other things from the, from the production of the gas as well. So you know, they, they love fossil fuels. These companies tried to go for renewables and failed. I think they had the opportunity to become, to be, you know, to be the incumbents who were there to catalyse the change. They had the opportunity and they, and they may even, to some degree, maybe they tried, but they have failed. I actually do not think the oil companies, the hydro, big hydrocarbon companies, are any longer going to be part of the future. I think they've, they've, they've had their chance in there. They just were found wanting. So I think, I think we need new incumbents. And I say that, um, I think that's very sad because the oil companies within them have wonderful expertise. I mean, if you could roll out with the expertise and the fabrication yards that are involved with North Soil to be pushing out um, the renewable opportunities that are available, you know, that would be a, now that's a really worthwhile thing to do. There should be no job losses in the oil industry other than the financiers and the, uh, the people at the top of the companies. Pretty much everyone else, there's plenty of work to be done on the renewable side. This is a jobs agenda. And this is, in, in that sense, the, the, the future is very rosy, whether that's in the retrofitting of houses, the uh, electrification of our infrastructure, um, the production of appliances that are much more efficient, though they should be in a, you know, a natural replacement cycle perhaps, um, as well as the actual renewable energy potential, renewable energy technologies themselves, um, and I'd say arguably nuclear in there. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm just kind of it's one of the one of the low carbon options that's available. All of that is a jobs agenda for the next 30 years.